Welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're highlighting the work of Imagine Biosystems, developing novel high sensitivity imaging technologies for early detection of cancer. I'm delighted to be joined by Bob Prue, the president and CEO. This is such an exciting area, Bob, and I'm so glad you're here with us to tell us about it. Great, I'm happy to be here, Vivian. Thanks for the invitation. So let's do a little 101 on the imaging technologies that are available at the moment, because they each have their benefits, but they also have their disadvantages. So you've got CT scanners, but there's a problem because they deliver ionizing radiation. Uh, you've got PET scans, which are very good at telling what's tumor and what's not, but you need a whole infrastructure for the radio pharmaceuticals you need for that. And then you've got MRI, which is great, but is not particularly good at distinguishing between cancer and non-cancer. So now introduce MagSense for us and what it does and what its advantages are compared to these other imaging technologies. Yeah, I think the easiest way to think of it, Vivian, is um, MagSense technology is a bit like uh, positron emission tomography in that it, it, it doesn't generate an image of the tissue. So MRI, as you correctly point out, is excellent at generating soft tissue images and differentiating things, but it can't tell you if the spot it sees is uh, a malignant form of cancer or just a, a tumor, a fibrotic tumor, for example, right? So what with MagSense technology, what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the ability of magnetic particles to generate a magnetic hotspot, um, like a PET tracer would generate a radioactive hotspot. And so what we see with MagSense technology is if we get these particles using a targeting ligand of some kind, particles will bind to the tumor, but the particles have a very unique property that they don't generate a magnetic signature unless they're bound to the tumor cells. So just, just a, in, uh, injecting these magnetic particles into the patient, they don't do anything until they become bound to the targeted tumor type, and then they generate a very a small magnetic signature that can be picked up by our technology. So effectively, you can think of MagSense technology like PET tracers generating a very specific hotspot image associated with the presence of the tumor, but we don't have to use radiation or I, um, to be able to do that. We're using weak magnetic fields to be able to identify these hotspots. Now, can you use this with existing MRI machines, and because you, you've, you've got the, the material that you in, inject, can you use ordinary MRI machines? So that's something that we're actually studying right now. So mag, um, magnetic relaxometry as a methodology is different than MRI, but we do know that um, these magnetic particles also can affect the magnetic uh, MR imaging uh, systems. So in our current clinical study, we're actually looking at that. Um, but the relaxometry technique in and of itself is different than MRI and would require a, our own piece of equipment to be able to detect it. One of the advantages we think of magnetic relaxometry is um, that the kind of equipment that would be necessary, um, we think we can scale to be usable in a doctor's office. So this would change the way we were able to do diagnosis then from instead of having to go to a central clinic or a hospital where you go to the imaging suite, um, we think we might be able to develop magnetic relaxometry uh, tech, uh, technologies to the point where it would be in a doctor's office, much like a mammogram or an ultrasound piece of equipment. Um, and that way then we could more, let, let's say, be more ubiquitous in, in the utility of this technology where you could go to your uh, OBGYN or your urologist, for example, um, they could give you the injection, do the test right there in the doctor's office, and then ideally um, go to the hospital and actually do MR, and the particles now also generate MR contrast, so you get the benefits of both worlds. Now, do you see this being used as a screening tool, or do you see it being used as a diagnostic tool? I, I, think, diag I think diagnostic, to be, to be real. Uh, you know, today there is no sort of pan-cancer targeting ligand. So the ability to just 
say, a once a year, go into your doctor, be given an injection of MagSense nanoparticles and say, yes or no, do you have cancer? That's, that's pretty unlikely, uh, given the state of what we know about how to detect cancer today. Um, and so because we are trying to be highly specific using these nanoparticles, um, we really have to know that there's a, a, a risk factor involved. You, you're, you have some other test, a blood test, for example, that PSA for, for men for prostate cancer, right? Or uh, you've identified a lump or you've seen a mammogram. Now you wanna know whether in fact that's really uh, a malignant form of cancer. So, you know, the specificity that we offer and the sensitivity that we offer needs to be combined with some other screening tool that says that patient's at risk. Now we wanna go and look and see, do they really have cancer? So you're currently trialing this in, in breast cancer and do you yeah. see it confined to, a, to I mean, you've mentioned uh, prostate cancer as well. Do you see it confined to a few cancers at first or do you think that it could be extended uh, further? Yeah, so I, I think to use, uh, to say that we could detect all cancers is probably a bit of a stretch uh, to, be, to be realistic. But I think there are many forms of cancer where we do have well-known biomarkers for them that um, we can take those biomarkers, and these are typically antibodies or proteins or uh, peptides on the surface of these cells that are associated with different types of cancer. We can take those as the means by which to target the delivery of our particles to those types of cancer. So today, we, as you observe, we're, we're focused initially on one form of breast cancer, uh, HER2 breast cancer, which is well known and well characterized. There's an antibody that's been known for a couple of decades now that is highly specific for HER2 expressing tumors. Um, so we're focused on that form, but we have started to develop the pipeline. We didn't, we felt it was important for our investors to know that we weren't, uh, didn't have all our eggs in just that one basket. Um, but we wanted to wait a little while until we'd seen that that was making progress. But now that we're in the clinic with that breast cancer product, we started to develop the pipeline. We're focusing on uh, other forms of solid tumors like uh, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer. Um, it'd be great if we could go after lung cancer. Lung cancer has a particular problem with getting biopsied samples from that. So our focus is primarily on um, those forms of solid tumor where um, either getting a biopsy or the current methods of um, non-invasive detection are still coming up short because we think that there's an opportunity for a highly sensitive, highly specific system like MagSense to have a play in the, in the clinic. Now, the science behind this is hugely exciting, but actually it offers uh, a great potential in terms of cost savings, because at the moment, a lot of those imaging technologies require very substantial infrastructure. Yeah, so, so it's actually interesting that we just recently completed a health economic study on our first product for breast cancer. Um, and here we went in and to a number of different hospitals, um, primarily in the United States, although we've started to look at other, other healthcare systems like the UK, Australia, Canada. Um, but primarily in the United States, we've, we've done this research where we've gone in and said, hey, what's the standard of care? What, what happens to a patient from the time of initial diagnosis through to getting a biopsy of a sample and, and ready for treatment? And how could um, that change if we were to implement a MagSense test instead, for example? And what we found was that um, at a fair and reasonable price for the MagSense test, we still are able to save the hospital system somewhere in the order of uh, $500 to $1,000 per patient. Um, over the course of, say, 10,000 patients, the hospital system would save uh, millions of dollars by doing a MagSense test instead of the current standard of care, if we can ultimately replace biopsying for those patients that are positive. The, 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 you know, for example, in our HER2 uh, breast cancer application, uh, we're not, again, going after primary diagnosis. In this particular example, we're trying to avoid lymph nodal biopsies, right? Today, when a patient is diagnosed with, with breast cancer, the first thing you want to know is it's spread to the lymph nodes. But to do that, they have to do biopsies on lymph nodes. And half the patients are negative. This means the doc goes back to the uh, patient and says, I've got good news, no metastatic spread. Bad news is I just cut your lymph nodes out to get you that answer. And of course, there's a lot of side effects and costs associated with lymphedema and the effects associated with uh, having removed some of the lymphatic system. So we looked at that and said, gee, if we could just take those 50% of patients that are node negative and have them avoid a surgical procedure of some kind and the concomitant morbidity that goes with that, 
we'd be saving patients an awful lot of grief and, and a lot of cost in the healthcare system. So lots of different settings in which this could be enormously important. What's your marketing strategy? So I, I come from a commercial background, um, uh, bringing products to market. And I looked at this and for me, this was a classic example, trying to break into the large medical imaging market, a small company, innovative, it's gonna be very, very difficult. So we, our strategy from the beginning has been that we want to be able to partner with somebody. There are, there are more than 40 companies, Vivian, that are already in the medical imaging space. These companies know how to make, sell, and service imaging equipment, right? We don't need to reinvent that wheel <laughs> to be successful, right? So our view has been, we want to try to partner with somebody. But when is the appropriate time to do that? I mean, we could have gone to the GEs and Siemens and Hologics, you know, the companies that are in that space early on, but they, you know, their answer to us would have been, this is very interesting, but have you tried this in human beings yet, <laughs> right? So our approach has been, we need to get to that proof of principle that this, this actually is demonstrable as having clinical value. The FDA gave us breakthrough device designation a couple of years ago. They looked at what we're doing and said, hey, if that actually works the way you say, that'll be you know, an improvement for medical care. So our job has been primarily to get it to that point get to the proof of principle so that we can then go knock on the doors of the strategic partners to help us commercialize the technology. And I believe that we're right on the cusp of that. This first clinical study is going to be our first clinical evidence that in fact, we can dose patients with our MagSense imaging agent, that it's safe, it's well tolerated by the patient, it gets to the lymph nodes and is detectable. At that point in time, we're gonna be in a very good position to then start to talk about the commercialization of the technology and who might help us do that. We would ultimately like to control, if you will, the manufacturing of the imaging agent, but I don't need to be in control of the instrument system that it's used on, for example. So we think that a partnering approach is probably the best value for our shareholders. One specific question, which is the rate limiting step in a lot of these imaging technologies is the actual readout of the image, because there's a global shortage of the healthcare professionals, radiologists and uh, other professionals who are able to read those images. What do you see as being the way forward with MagSense? Yeah, so that's an interesting, a very interesting question in that Unlike, as I said at the beginning, unlike MRI, where we're trying to generate an image of the tissue and you got to try to interpret as a radiologist, you have to try to interpret, what do I see here, for example? With MagSense technology, what they're going, the readout from our system is going to be, um, is there a magnetic hotspot within the field of view? So for example, if I'm looking here in the axial region of, of the breast for whether there's lymph nodal involvement, right? What I'm going to see by the MagSense readout is a magnetic dipole if our particles have become attached to tumor cells in the lymph nodes. It'll be a simple yes, no answer that within the field of view, there's magnetic particles. And the only reason those particles are there is because they're bound to tumor cells. So it'll be a relatively simple readout that will show within the field of view of our detector that in fact, yes or no, there's a magnetic dipole. And if it's yes, we know that that's correlated to the presence of tumor cells. You can then go back and do an MRI and now visualize the tissue, et cetera. But the readout will be relatively simple and be very straightforward. It'll, be, it'll happen in real time. So as soon as the patient is done, you can think of the experience being kind of like uh, an X-ray. You'll go in to the suite, you'll lie on a bed underneath the detector. In the course of about two minutes, we'll do a series of magnetic measurements and then you'll be done from the patient's perspective. And literally within minutes, we will then have the readout that shows yes or no, do we see a dipole there? So it's a great triage system too. Absolutely. Um, very, it's, a, it's such an interesting area. And now uh, I must get back to investors. So in the coming uh, 12 months, what should investors be looking out for? So I think we, we tend right now to be thinking about three big buckets in terms of trying to deliver shareholder value. Clearly one of them is um, uh, continuing to progress our initial phase one study that we're doing in Australia for this breast cancer application. Um, uh, we're, um, we're happy with the recent progress of that study. We've now enrolled multiple patients, um, but we still need to continue to enroll and see how those data start to play out. We hope that in the first half of next year, we'll have news flow associated with that study. 
The second bucket that we think about is, as I said earlier, um, um, uh, not having all of our eggs in that one basket. So progress in our R&D portfolio of bringing other uh, cancer um, in, into the market. So progress on uh, state cancer, for example, et cetera. The third bucket is um, we, we know that there are a lot of applications for our magnetic particles outside of our own proprietary magnets technology. Magnetic particles like ours are used in vaccines. They're used in magnetic hyperthermia treatments. And so we've been trying to cultivate relationships with other companies that have use of our magnetic particles. And so I, I, we, we think that there's a small business associated with being a supplier of, of um, high quality magnetic particles that can be used in other people's products. So I think next year, the news flow will be associated with those three buckets, our current clinical study, the development of our own of our R&D pipeline of the new imaging agents and any third party relationships that might lead to clinical products uh, using our magnetic particles. It's been a fascinating discussion and this technology really opens a whole new vista in imaging. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us, Bob Pru. Pleasure to be here. Thanks very much.